Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, what beautiful weather we've had here for the past couple days. Really taking advantage of it, doing a lot outside. First off, I wanted to uh, welcome home my good buddy Mike the Fireman. You remember him from a lot of the shows. Uh, his dad, Mr. Volinitz, uh just came back from the hospital and he uh, also enjoys the show. So welcome back. Glad you're home. You know, as, as we get older... Uh, it seems like a trip to the hospital is unavoidable. You know, when you get to that certain age, sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you. And and like I was telling you before, you don't want it to happen over foolish things like me. A couple people asking me, what happened to your forehead? I was putting a roof on my pigeon coop. Yes, I I have a pigeon coop. Uh, what, <laughs> what kind of maniac still has a pigeon coop today's day and age? You know, aren't too many pigeons left in the city like there were years ago. I don't know what has happened to them. But uh, anyway, um, I was putting a roof on there. And, and, you know, when you get to a certain age, ladders should, you know, in certain states, you can't go on a ladder if you're over a certain age. And, and by law, believe it or not. And, and I know, and I've never been afraid of heights or anything. And I've done a lot of high climbing and stuff, but my house, like I have a gutter that needs to be cleaned. I can't go up there because I'm not going to, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm too big to be on these ladders to begin with. And, you know, you get, you just lose part of your balance and things like that as you get older and, you know, you start going, but I was smart. You know, I, I only go on short ladders, you know, A-frame style ladders. And, uh, to do the pigeon coop uh, roof, I was uh, I put it up there. Everything was good, but when I was walking away, I was nowhere near the ladder. I tripped over a branch, and I was carrying a piece of plywood, and I didn't want to fall on the plywood because it was it had nails and stuff. So I threw the plywood to the side, and just like a wily e. coyote show, <laughs> the plywood bounced off another thing and hit me in the forehead. So it is funny, what you know. Sometimes you sit there. I I went through 30 years, about 30 years where I didn't fall, you know, from probably from when I was uh, probably from 30 to about 60. I didn't fall. And then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I don't know if my equilibrium, my balance. I, I've been tripping like like crazy, like I'm back to an infant. Did you ever get like that? Where you, you know, and I, I kick things, stub things with my toe and I got the dropsies and the shakes what the heck is going on here? Boy, age creeps up on you quick, doesn't it? Anyway, we got a couple things to get to today. And um, first off, I wanted to, uh, I'm going to ask for a favor at the end of the show. So if you could stick around, I really would appreciate it. I'm going to be asking for a big favor, but uh, let's get started. We got a couple things to get to. Okay, first off, I'd like to start off the show with a quick cleanup. Now, you know, uh, these are a called spanner wrenches, and these are adjustable because they do move. And a spanner wrench is made for a special type of spanner nut. It's usually a round nut that has slots cut in the side. And you do come across them in machinery, things like that, sometimes old automobiles, things like that. And when you do come across them, there's nothing, you know, a lot of times people use wrenches or uh, pliers or things like that, but nothing works like a spanner wrench, okay? So here's one that's in really good shape that I picked up at uh, Williams, right? You can see here it's a Williams from Buffalo, New York. Beautiful shape, nothing wrong with this, nothing to do. But this one here, Roger gave me, uh, you know, from the Long Island Tool Meet, and uh, he said, you know, maybe you could straighten it out on the date, but we were talking about this before, the way this is bent, it's bent in such a way that I think somebody did that on purpose because it, it would leave it flat and and still leave this up to give you room. I think it was done on purpose. However, Roger wanted to see it cleaned up and straightened out. So what do you say we go over to the wire brush and give it a quick clean up and see what it looks like? Okay, so this is a wire brush cleanup using three different grades of wire brush just to make sure you get in all the areas and whatnot. It exposes all the dents and dings that the patina covers up, but you can see how nice it looks now, usable. But it is, we still have that wicked bend to it. So let's head over to the dake and see if we can't get this back into uh, a straight condition. What do you say? Everybody's favorite, the dake. A lot of people ask me how come it wasn't on my top 20 tools that I would need. I don't use this all every week, but I do love using it, just like the lathe. We don't use it every week, but love using it. So 
let's see let's get set up we have the wrench here we put on the flat nose cone let's get started okay now you could see where we have it we have it uh, to this basic round plate i have here just to uh just as a base and then i have these two smaller plates they actually come uh, with the dake and now we're going to press this down here and again i was telling you that metal likes to bend back to where it was before it has almost like a memory and the other thing to remember is uh this ain't going to shoot out or anything but i always put my hand over here and let's lower it down now as far as heating it no no reason to heat this up because uh you know it's we're not making a, a vicious bend and these do these are semi-malleable you know they're not hardened to where they're going to snap or so i hope <laughs> so here you can see we're pressing it down uh we have almost two tons of pressure you could see okay and here you can see how easily it's bending back that's an easy bend right if you get it in the right spot uh, now we're just going to just, and then you can relax it, uh, but I could feel by the pressure on the handle as I'm pushing down, it's not giving me a lot of uh, force. So let me loosen it up a little bit and see what happens with the bend back. Okay, you can see we took quite a bit of a bend out, but it's still got that twist in there. And that's where someone, now again, you're going to reposition this a little bit. To try and get that twist out of there that's going to be a little bit difficult to do but if you press it right it the twist should come out which should be right about there and again this is trial and error you know you could see that I, many times when i first started off with the dig i started bending it the wrong way and or i bent it and it i had to re-bend it the other way sometimes you got to turn it one way and the other here we're up to about three and a half tons. Let's loosen it. You can see that did a that did a huge. You see that? So now it's just a matter of again positioning it so that we uh, we get these bends out. Okay, now sometimes the hardest things to get out of a wrench is a twist. Okay, and we, that's what we have here. You can see there's a twist in the handle. Can you see that? So what we're going to do is we're going to if you you have to think about how would you push this if you if this was made of like tin foil and you would twist it like this to get it back so that's what we're going to try and do okay we got the bend out but now we have that twist and again a twist is a hard thing to get on the press because you push on one side it will twist on the other so what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the vise we're going to put this into the vise and we're going to use my buddy richie kemp's persuader wrench these are fantastic for getting twists out of tools Okay, this thing is <laughs> my hand. This thing has fought me from the beginning, but we got it fairly straight. You see that? We got it fail. I mean, but that twist is a hard thing to get out. So the main thing is that it's uh, back in. So now we just got to get rid of. You see these forge marks around here? Whenever you hold it, you see that that forge marks. That's not comfortable in the hand. Let's just uh, make it comfortable to use. It's got a coating on it already. And uh, then we'll call this one done. And you know my favorite part. Remember what Roger's spanner wrench looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. I had all intentions of just doing a quick cleanup on this, a wire brush, and ah, you know. And then I said, you know, Roger, he gave me this tool, you know, for the show, for you guys to see. And, and you, I guess we're the only channel that will <laughs> that has cleaned up a spanner edge, right? But let's take a look at what we did here. Uh, we took all of the pitting and the, the grind, to, you know, it had the forge marks on the back. We straightened it out as best we could. It's not perfect, but it's uh, it's a very usable wrench now. Everything's been lubricated. Took all the the markings, the forgings across all of the wrench, right, and just made it into something that feels so beautiful. Blued the inside, uh, embellished the letters with a little sandpaper so that you could see them. It pops out. And again, this is the Knox Manufacturing Company out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. What do you think? Uh, 
this went from a, a give you know a tool that you wouldn't even ask a couple dollars for to something that you'd be proud to hang on your your pegboard right in your workshop what do you think okay so this one's going to be a little bit of a short one today because i told you in the beginning of the uh Oh, in my intro that I I'm, I was going to ask for a favor. I don't usually ask for favors, but uh, this one here, I know a lot of you will come through on, on this one for me. Um, and that is, I, I discovered a channel. Let me tell you the backstory real quick about this. I believe that we have things that are handed down. It's obvious we have things handed down from our ancient ancestors. But I believe that we have things handed down from maybe one or two generations away, you know? There's, there's no denying that you might have uh, a son, a father who was a singer, and then his son turns out to be a great singer, or a race car driver, and then his son turns out to be a race car driver. Sometimes it's, we used to say it's in your blood, you know? Sometimes it skips a generation. Well, when I used to be into old cars years ago, I used to restore old cars. One time I went to a, a car show, and uh, I saw a Model A Ford there. And something hit me. I went over and I knew exactly how to open up the headlight. I knew like all these things. It was like deja was vu. Like deja vu. So if you've ever had deja vu, you know what I mean? It's kind of a weird thing. But I said somebody, my, my great grandfather had a Model A, I guess. And, and, and I said, or uh, this is in my place. So I said, one day I'm going to have a Model A. So that's it. I know I will. Just like I knew I would have a piece of land upstate. Just, you know, these are things you think about. These goals or whatever that you set in your life or visions that you say, one day I'm going to own one. One day I'm going to have a Model A. So um, I've been looking for a long time, not only for a Model A, but just to to learn about them. So when I get them, I'm not in the dark. And uh, I came across this channel on YouTube, Paul Shin out of uh, California. What a great guy. What a great guy. Does all repairs on Model A's and stuff. First of all, one of the best cars ever made. Love that car, right? So simple. I need simple in my life. I got to get away from complicated. I want simplicity that I could figure it out and do it, fix it. So Paul Shin's channel, absolutely fantastic. I, we have a lot in common. He's a ham radio operator. He, uh, he started his channel 16 years ago when I started mine. So like I said, we got a lot in common. And I said, I've been binge watching his channel, loving it, feel great after every episode. And I said, you know what? He's at 49,700 subscribers. So my favor that I'm asking for you, please go over there, subscribe to his channel. I, I, we need a 300 of you at least, right? We got to get him over. He's been at 49 for a long time. I don't know what it is with YouTube. It seems like when you get to those little, you know, those... If 99,000, like 805 Road King or, you know, or 900, like some of you, or even even 99, if you're almost at 100 subscribers, it seems like it takes forever for that last. And then all of a sudden, four or five come at once. I don't know what's going on. But this guy, so please, if you can, I'm going to have a link in the description. Go over, subscribe to Paul and, uh, and watch a couple of his videos. I think you'll really enjoy it. I mean, look, I, I, I watch videos that I... I have, like, you know, fixing a Model A. You say, I'll never have a Model A. You, you're you not going to believe how enjoyable it is to watch that car be fixed or whatever. So I would appreciate it as a favor to me. Let's get him over 50,000. I know we could do it. And with that, thank you so much. And we'll see you again on Wednesday. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>